Well, what's happening, everybody? Well, I'm down in my wood shop today. I'm going to put the finishing touches on uh, my second denim bow. <clears throat> this bow is oak. It's 62 inches. And uh, before I got a little carried away, I thought I'd answer a question to one of my subscribers. Uh, for some reason, I wasn't able to text a response to you on the old YouTube here. So I thought I'd just show you what I'm doing. Um, when asked about the denim, if it's an epoxy that's used to put on the uh, denim or <clears throat> how I uh, how I get it on there. Um, I have five coats on this denim as it is right now. And underneath the denim is some very inexpensive mesh drywall tape. Um, way more inexpensive and a little bit neater to work with than uh, fiberglass. And what I use is some type 2 glue. And I will run my tape down, um, starting with a full piece that will run completely through the bow. And then I start a taper that starts about you know, six inches from the end. That will go to six inches from the end. And then about every three inches or so after that to add a little bit of strength to the bow. And then I glue that down, or at least I, I load it up with glue to make sure I fill in every one of these little squares that are on the tape. And I lay my denim over the top of it. And I am talking a lot of glue, not just a uh, not just a finger rubbing. It's, it's quite a bit. I've already sanded out this part a little bit, but you can still see some of the shine. Once this is uh, glued up, <clears throat> I'll come in with my file the finest one I have normally, and then I work the sides. And I'm able to take the denim and the rest of the fiberglass tape right off to create a fairly decent seam. Now you can still see, let me see, I haven't finished too much sanding down here. You still might be able to see uh, some rough, see, so there's still some rough edges here. Now once I have filed off the edges and I've got the limbs tilled and uh, the bow is shooting, I'm ready to go ahead and start the urethane process. Now the back is coated with nothing but polyurethane. Uh, this stuff right here. Okay, It'll take a minimum of three coats before I go back over with my fine file and my sander to remove some of the some of the finer threads that are left behind. But from three to five coats, that's real easy to do because it's brittle now and it just almost burns itself right off and it kind of creates this kind of creates this nice looking little seam here. This is uh, again I'm just getting ready to finish the file and sanding process for the last three coats of urethane. Um, <clears throat> jeans. I should tell you that I got these from my uh, fiance. A uh, brand new pair of uh, of uh, jeans that she just never wore, and I love that how dark blue they were. And uh, you can't let a good pair of designer jeans go to waste. Um, and I figure I can get probably I bet you five or six bows out of uh, a leg uh, if cut properly. Now the seam the, there's going to be a seam because I don't have uh, 62 inch legs. <laughs> Thankfully, my fiance doesn't either. Um, so there's ultimately always going to be a seam. I try to get it uh, basically where the 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 handle is going to the handle will cover the the uh, the overlap. But what I also do is every single time I urethane, I start taking the top down with my file, um, and then eventually there's going to be a very fine line right here. That won't be raised. It'll just be uh, it'll be tapered in nicely. Um, so I, in total, I'd have to say anywhere between eight to ten coats of urethane on the denim, and it will shine like glass. Uh, I have one in Oklahoma right now to a uh, to a gentleman who uh, seems to be enjoying it. And uh, I quite frankly like the looks of the, of the denim. I think it looks cool. Of course, there's other options. I mean, 
uh, everybody knows them all, the snake skins, the uh, rawhides or fiberglasses, uh, there's linens, denims. I have a pool bow upstairs that has cargo pants for a backing. Uh, I got a crappy bow upstairs that has duct tape for some backing. So that's, uh, that's the big secret, a little bit of fiberglass tape, a pair of unwanted jeans that are in uh, fairly decent shape, lots of urethane, and a steady, patient hand so we're not tearing away at anything. And then you can create that, that nice seam hidden right down your bow. That's it. And the goal, again, um, I've said this before in other videos, the goal here is to make a, a working bow uh, for as least amount of money as possible because uh, I know there are other people out there, much like myself, that might only have a hundred dollars for a bow. I don't have six to eight hundred dollars for a you know super nice takedown bow. Uh, you know, I just I have time and I have some inexperienced, inexpensive materials to uh, to work with. And uh, as you can see, it, it, for short money, we can really put out some very nice bows. I'm only looking at about $65 for this finished product, and uh, that's the way I want to keep it. And uh, I'll catch up to you guys again when I finish this one. This is a little, uh, this is a family project I got going on. It's another 60-inch oak bow. That one has a nice piece of maple, big fat piece of maple in the center. Oak on top. I just got the glue drying today, and uh, I'm. Uh, I'm looking forward to starting this one probably tomorrow morning. We'll give that glue a full 24 hours. And uh, we'll put the finishing touches on this beautiful 35-pound oak longbow with the, the maple in the center. So I hope that answers your questions. I thank you for subscribing and watching. I appreciate it. And I will catch up to you guys again. Um, I'll, I'll check up with you tomorrow.